Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Here is a special family invitation to all families, relatives and friends from Masjid al-Abidin this Saturday, February 24th, 6 p.m. with the theme being an ideal Muslim family with guest speaker Mufti Muhammad Farhan who holds a PhD in Islamic jurisprudence and law. Let us join hands together with our families for the family event this Saturday, February 24th, 6 p.m. at Masjid al abidin on the corner of 127th Street and Liberty Avenue. A tasty and delicious family dinner will be served. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. <laughs> وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما بقدر أزمة ذاتك في كل وقت وحين فاعلم أنه لا إله إلا الله اللهم صل على محمد وبارك وسلم Respected Mufti Sahib or beloved gathering brothers and sisters in Islam I greet you all with the greetings of peace and love السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Allow me first of all on behalf of the Executive Board of Majl Abidin and also on behalf of our congregation to welcome each and every one of you here today to our monthly lecture. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward each and every one of you inshallah for the efforts that you have made to be here today to join with us uh, in this uh, sacred gathering, gathering in which it is our belief, it is our faith that communicates to us the gathering when it comes together to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and glorify Him that we are dignified with the presence of angelic beings. And this is the way we should actually treat gatherings of this nature. That we are sitting here and we aspire, inshallah, we have this aspiration to know more about this beautiful faith of ours, this beautiful religion of ours, to know more about the kitab of Allah and the sunnah of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In addition to this, the theme of our lecture tonight, inshallah, will be on family values, an ideal uh, family, what it should be like. And why did I select the subject? Because as the Imam of this community, the ongoing complaints about families and family structures and how families are actually breaking down because of lack of communication between children and parents the amount of abuse that is happening within subhanAllah our society that we have to deal with on a weekly basis is overwhelming and I think as we all aspire as a community to have a society that is built on taqwa and iman that it starts with ourselves and it starts with our family it is easy for us to point our fingers towards the negatives that we see in our society and our community today. But the answer to those problems lies with the decision that we make starting with ourselves and what we aspire as Muslims for ourselves, for our children inshallah and our grandchildren. And for that reason, the subject an ideal Muslim family, I think it is something that is vital for the transformation of subhanAllah of our societies. The Prophet says the best of you are those who are best and kind to their inshallah to their family members. And as such, inshallah, uh, we, we invited Mufti and we want to thank him from the depth of our hearts, uh, inshallah, for him to take time off from his busy schedule to be here, inshallah. He has a commitment at 8 o'clock, inshallah, and inshallah, he will be here with us as well as Asia. We want to thank him, inshallah, we'll formally introduce him, inshallah, later on in the program. But before we do so, we will make a short opening supplication, and thereafter, we have two young, youngsters from our madrasa. We'll ask one of them to recite uh, portions from the Quran and the other would inshallah do the translation and thereafter we will hear from our Mufti inshallah the closing remarks will be done no other than the president of Masjid Abidin brother Aziz Medin he will be doing the closing remarks inshallah so thank you so much inshallah for being here may Allah reward you uh, we we'll make the dua Allahumma ameen اللهم لك الحمد حمدا يوافي نعمه يكافي مزيدا اللهم صل وسلم وبارك ومجد وكرم وعزز وفضل على هذا النبي الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه 
وسلم تسليما بقدر أزمة ذلك في كل وقت وعين اللهم اجعل جمعنا جمعا مباركا وتفرقنا تفرقا مرحوما ومشكورا اللهم أرنا الحق حقا ورزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا ورزقنا اجتنابه وصلى الله تعالى على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما بقدر أزمة ذاتك في كل وقت وحين فاعلم أنه لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم Inshallah, now I will invite uh, Brother Adam, Inshallah, a student of our madrasa, Inshallah, to recite portions in the Quran, and thereafter we will pass the mic over to Naeem Ghafar to do the translation. <laughs> فالسابقات سبقا فالمدبرات أمرا يوم ترجف الراجفة تتبعها الرادفة قلوب يومئذ واجفة أبصارها خاشعة يقولون إنا لمردودون في الحافرة أإذا كنا عظاما نخرة قالوا تلك إذا خرة خاسرة فإنما هي زجرة واحدة فإذا هم الساهرة هل أتاك حديث موسى إذ ناداه ربه بالواد المقدس ثوى اذهب إلى فرعون إنه طغى فقل هل لك إلى أن تزكى وأهديك إلى ربك فتخشى فأراه الآية الكبرى By those angels who pull out the souls of the disbelievers and the wicked with great violence. By those angels who gently pick up the souls of the believers. And by those that swim along. And by those that press forward as in a race, and by those angels who arrange to do the command of their Lord, so verily you disbelievers will be called to account. On the day when the first blowing of the trumpet is blown, and earth and the mountains, the earth and the mountains will shake violently and everybody will die. The second blowing of the trumpet follows it and everyone will be resurrected. Some hearts that day will shake with fear and anxiety, their eyes will be downcast. They say, shall we indeed be returned to our former state of life, even after we crumbled bones? They say, it would in that case be a return without loss, but it will be only a single zatra, single shout. When behold, they find themselves on the surface of the earth, alive after their death. Has there come to you the story of Musa? When his Lord called him in the sacred valley of Tuwa, go to Fir'aun, verily he has transgressed all bounds in crimes, sins, polytheism, disbelief, and say to him, would you purify yourself from the sin of disbelief by becoming a believer? And that I, give, and that I guide you to your Lord, so you should fear him. Then Musa showed him the great signs. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi Jazakallah khairan, may Allah reward both of them and their parents, inshaAllah. It is with great honor I would like to introduce no other than Mufti Muhammad Farhan. Mufti Farhan is raised in New York. He has completed his initial education in high school in New York. He pursued his education for eight years in Islamic studies, in which he uh, completed a bachelor's degree in Arabic and Islamic sciences, specializing in Hadith studies, and then he went to complete his master's in Islamic theology in International University in Karachi, Pakistan. Finally, he accomplished a PhD in Islamic jurisprudence and law and from the, from the same university. He is also specialized in Islamic economy and finance. And finance. Currently, he is the Director of Islamic Affairs for Muslims in Long Island. 
Masjid Al Baqi, a consultant for the Islamic Center of South Shore Valley Stream, Long Island Masjid Hamza, and a spiritual advisor for the Islamic Center of Long Island, Westbury, uh, New York. He is the co founder and president uh, of a non for profit organization for youths called Children of Adam. It is great, with great privilege and honor that I invite now to the podium uh, Mufti Muhammad Farhan to address us in, uh, on the subject area in ID Muslim family. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim, Nahmaduhu wa nusalli ala rasulihi al Karim amma ba'da. سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت لليم الحكيم رب شهد صدري وسلي أمري واحلل أقدة من لسان يفكه قولي رب يسر ولا تؤسر وتممه لنا بالخير يا فتاه يا فتاه يا فتاح قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في القرآن المجيد والفرقان الحميد بعد عوض بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إذ قال يوسف لأبيه يا أبت إني رأيت أحد عشر كوكبا والشمس والقمر رأيتهم لي ساجدين صدق الله العظيم. Respected brothers and elders, mothers and sisters in Islam, we are grateful, we are thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his bounties and his blessings in our life. May Allah increase for all of us. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has gathered us here tonight in the most blessed, the most noble place on the face of this earth, may He also gather us beneath His arsh and His shade when there will be no shade except for the shade of the arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brothers and sisters, as our respected Imam mentioned in front of us, the topic for us tonight is called an ideal Muslim family. Now a question that I would ask you is that the ayah of the Quran that I recited in front of you is from chapter number 12. Chapter 12 is known as Surah Yusuf. Surah Yusuf itself is known as Ahsan al-Qasas, the most beautiful, profound story within the Quran itself. The Quran itself has multiple things. The Quran itself has Qasas, which means stories. The Quran itself has a Nasiha, which is advice. The Quran itself has commandment, the Hakam, the Hikam of Allah, the, 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 the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It has the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the, the rulings of the actions that we are supposed to do. So now this surah, which is known as Surah Yusuf, which is the 12th surah of the Quran, is the most Ahsan, the most beautiful story. In the fourth, fourth verse of the surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions to us, and I want all of us to fully pay attention to this ayah of the Quran. When this young man Yusuf, when this young child Yusuf <coughs> said to his father, Li Abihi, Ya Abati, oh my dad. And wallahi brothers and sisters, only if we knew the beauty and the eloquence of the Arabic language. The way that this child speaks to his father and says, Ya Abati. Wallahi, the way that our children speak to us today, we know how that relationship is. One of my friends, uh, he was joking and saying that today the relationship between parents and children is very minimum. And only in the times of need. And to an extent now they don't even speak, they text each other. So a son texts his father and says, uh, he says, uh, you know, no man, no fun, your son. No man, no fun, your son. That's the only thing that he writes about it. He says, too bad, too sad, your dad. That's the only communication. So now, subhanAllah, the Quran is defining the sense of connection between the father and the son. With qala Yusufu li abihi, ya abati. Oh my dad. Oh my beloved father, meaning he's coming to his father and he's sharing what? He's sharing a dream. In, he says, Inni ra'aytu ahada ashara kawka, wa shamsa wal qamara ra'aytu hum li sajid. He said, oh my, oh my dad, I saw this dream that is something that is in my mind that I can't let go of, that I saw 11 stars, the sun and the moon doing such that here, bang down in front of me. Now a question that I ask you, an ideal family and the dream of this young kid? What am I talking about? How do we relate this ayah of the Quran to tonight's topic? And that gets to the details of this ayah of the Quran. And I want all of us to focus because this is something that I want all of us to take back home tonight. 
So this young child wakes up and goes to his father and says, Oh my father. And who is the father? None other than the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's none other than the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Yaqub alayhi salam. So ajeeb thing related to Yusuf alayhi salam and Yaqub alayhi salam and Ishaq alayhi salam and Ibrahim alayhi salam is that they are the only four people who are the prophets of Allah without any non-prophet between them. So Ibrahim alayhi salam, Ishaq alayhi salam, Ishaq alayhi salam, Yaqub alayhi salam, Yaqub alayhi salam, Yusuf alayhi salam were all prophets of Allah through biological kids. Meaning that's the most beautiful lineage as one of the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu mentions. So now this young child says, oh my dad, I have seen a dream. In my dream, I saw 11 stars, the sun and the moon doing sajda to you. What is the reference? As we know that the end of the surah, chapter 12, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us the ta'bir. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us the interpretation of this dream. And what is the interpretation of the dream? The 11 stars are the 11 kids, the brothers. The sun is the father, the moon is the mother. That's the interpretation, which is well known to all of us. Brothers and sisters, now I want to reflect upon a very important point. Have you ever heard of something known as a lunar or a solar eclipse? Has any one of you witnessed a lunar or a solar eclipse? Many of us have. We have seen a lunar, lunar eclipse, we have seen a solar eclipse, we have seen all of these things. Has any one of you ever heard of a social eclipse? Brothers and sisters, that's my point, point and question for all of us to take back home tonight. Have I witnessed a social eclipse? I might have seen a lunar eclipse and a solar eclipse, but have I witnessed a social eclipse? And let me explain how. When the sun and the moon changes their paths, when they cross each other, in science it is known as the lunar or the solar eclipse. Depending upon what is in the front, what is in the back, and what is crossing what, right? That's well known to all of us. When the sun and the moon crosses the path, then you have something known as the lunar and the solar eclipse. And what happens, brothers and sisters? Even if it's a bright day, it will become dark. If it's night, the stars will lose its radiance. The stars will not be bright on a night when there is an eclipse. Because there is no rays of light anymore. Brothers and sisters, let's take that example and put this in this fourth verse of Surah Yusuf. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that this young child saw what? Eleven stars. And who are the stars? The eleven brothers. Well, who was the son? The son was the father. And who was the mother? The moon. If the mother and the father, which is the sun and the moon, do not do their parts in the proper manner, the radiance will be lost from our children, and that is called a social eclipse. An eclipse that we see every single day in our own houses. When the mothers and the fathers do not fulfill their responsibilities when it's supposed to be fulfilled, then the greatest loss is for our stars and that's our children. And that is called a social eclipse. You may not find it in the books, but may Allah forgive we may find it in our own homes. And I say this so often, brothers and sisters, our children do not listen to us. Our children observe us. Our children do not listen to us. Our children observe our actions. And our lives is something which affects their lives. Let me share with you a story from the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in one of the surahs of the Quran, which is a very famous and well-known ayah of the Quran, Ibrahim alayhi salam is approached by his son, Ismail alayhi salam, and he says, the father says to his son, Ibrahim alayhi salam, tells his son Ismail alayhi salam, Inni arafil manami, anni My son, I have seen in my, in my dream that I have to sacrifice you. Oh my son, what do you say about this? And of course, this is a different topic to itself, that the dreams of the prophets are wahi and revelation. And that's why he took this as a command of Allah. And he went to his son, not to get his approval, but 
to let him know that he's about to fulfill the command of Allah. And then what does the son say? He said, Ya Aba Tif al Oh my dad, do as what you have been ordained. Do as what you have been ordained. And slaughter me for the sake of Allah if that's the command. I want all of you to hold this thought for two minutes. Remember this thought for two minutes. I'm going to come back to this. So a story. Ibrahim salam in the Quran is seeing a dream. In which he's being told that you have to sacrifice his son. He goes to his son and the son says, Dad, I'm ready. Whatever you want, I'm, I'm going to listen to you, my dad. Now I want you to hold that story for two minutes in your minds. Let's look at Surah Hud. Chapter Hud. In Surah Hud, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the Nuh alayhi salam, the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nuh alayhi salam goes to his son and he says, Oh my son, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has inspired me and have told me in wahi and revelation that there's a huge storm that is about to come. Oh my son, would you kindly come upon my ark and you can be saved if you're on top of this. Do you know what the son said? Surah Hud mentions, he said, Oh my father, I don't need your help. I know how to climb the mountains, Judy and all these mountains. I will go on top of these mountains and I'll protect my own self. Brothers and sisters, I want you to combine these two stories together now. Two prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ibrahim is telling his son, Oh my son, I'm going to take your life for the sake of Allah. I have been ordained and inspired. He says, Dad, I'm ready. No, Ali Salam is being told, he's telling his son, oh, no, oh son, I want to save your life. He says, Dad, I don't need your help. What's the difference? Both are biological sons. They're not that one is adopted and the other is not. Both prophets are ulul azmi min al rusul amongst the greatest of the Anbiya and the Prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ibrahim alayhi salam's son is ready to commit his life for what his father is telling him. The son of Nuh alayhi salam is not even ready to listen to his father. Even when he wants to save his life. And you know what the difference is brothers and sisters? The difference is in the Quran, which Allah defines in the Quran. That the wife of Sayyidina Ibrahim salam was the woman which was righteous. And in Surah Tahrim, Allah mentions that the wife of Nuh salam never believed. So a partner was righteous and the other wasn't, and they couldn't change the life of Hassan. Even though the father was the prophet. Brothers and sisters, vice versa. If we want changes in the life of our generations, we need to change our lives. We cannot expect and we cannot hope for an ideal family when I am not ready to commit a change in my life. When I'm not ready to move forward and bring forth a change within our own lives. And that is what the Quran is telling us. That Ibrahim salam is asking his son to give his life, he's ready. Ibn Nuh salam is asking his son to save his life, he's not ready. And the reason is the commitment of the spouses towards the raising of the children. And brothers and sisters, that is something that all of us <coughs> must also understand in our lives. That if we want the change in our families, then these are the changes that we need to bring into our lives. Let me share with you something productive through statistically uh, gathering some information in the society that we live in. First and foremost, brothers and sisters, we need to define the difference between a house and a home within our own minds. What is a house and what is a home? A house could be an only an exterior structure of a building itself. It could be worth millions and it could be a shed. It is just a house. It could be worth millions as a mansion or it could just be a shed which is a broken down place where the water may be seeping through. That is just a structure of a place where individuals live. But what is inside that place, that is what his home is. That is what a home is. We focus so much on building the house that we forget our homes, brothers and sisters. We forget that we have to build a home which is inside our houses that we completely forget. I remember a quick story. 
I don't know how true that is. They said that a father came back hard from work one day. The son grabs onto the father, gives the father a big hug and says, Dad, can I ask you a quick, quick question? I know you're really, really tired. The dad says, yes, okay, quickly ask me. He goes, Dad, how much money you make per hour? So the dad says, that's a weird question. Why are you asking me this? If you want money, if you need toys, if you need food, I'll give you. What's the point of you asking me how much money I make? He says, no, 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 please tell me how much money you make. So he gave an X amount of number, 20, 30, 40, 50 dollars. He gave an X amount of number. So the son goes, Dad, uh, then I, can, I, can I please have $10 then? So the father says, what's wrong with you? So finally at the end of the day, he takes out the wallet, he throws the $10 at him, he says, don't bother me, I came hard from work and you're bothering me so much, I don't want any more of you, that's it, go away. The father walks away, he cleans up, he freshens up, he eats the food, he realizes that he shouldn't have been so mad at his son. He knocks on the door for his son's room. He steps inside just so that he can speak to him what's going on in his life. And to his amazement, he sees that the son is sitting in the room counting more money inside the room. So the father now is mad. He says, what's wrong with you? You have no respect and dignity and honor for your father who works so hard day and night to make earning for you and living for you. And you ask such questions and now it's worthless. And now we have all this money on your table. What are you doing? So the son says, allow me one more minute, dad. So he gathers all the money that is there and he sits, stands in front of his father. And with such innocence, he says, oh, my father, I have gathered $50. Can I please buy one hour of your life tomorrow? Dad, can I please buy one hour of your life tomorrow? I just want to spend one hour with you, dad. Can I please buy one hour of your life tomorrow? Brothers and sisters, what are we doing in our houses? And what are we doing in our homes? That is something that we need to realize and understand within our own lives. I want to share with you some statistics related to families in America. And what causes the most dysfunctional families in America? And how we as Muslims can become the most ideal families in America itself? Because the blessing that we have been given is that we have been given the most beautiful life of the Prophet Muhammad which explains the haq and the rights of every single individual of a society. A lot of time when brothers come to me complaining for the wives and the wives come complaining for the, for the, for the husbands and the children for the parents and all this, I always begin by saying one thing. I said, one person's responsibility is the other person's right. If one person is not fulfilling their responsibility, then the rights of the other person must not be fulfilled. If the husband is not fulfilling his responsibility, the rights of the woman are being violated. If the woman is not fulfilling her responsibility, the rights of the husband are being violated. If the parents are not fulfilling their responsibility, the rights of the children are being violated. If the children are not fulfilling their responsibility, the rights of the parents are being violated. Brothers and sisters, we have been given responsibility. Be a father, a mother. And wallahi, one of my good friends said something so beautiful. And I want all of you to take this back with you tonight. There are some things that you should always take back. You're going to listen to a 40 minute talk. What are you going to remain back with? Few things. And this is one of the things I really want you to take back with you. Every single blessings in our life is attached with a responsibility. Every blessing of our life comes with a responsibility. No blessing in life comes without a responsibility. Being a father, being a brother, being a mother, being a sister, being a wife, anyone, every blessing of life is attached with a responsibility. And that responsibility is attached with an accountability. That is life. This is our life. Every blessing of life is attached to a responsibility. And that responsibility is attached to an accountability. Either in this world or the day of the day. But we have been blessed that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us the most beautiful life of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That the most beautiful and excellent example for you is in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As our beloved Imam mentioned in front of us, that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the best of you are those who are the best of their families. 
The Nabi of Allah Sallallahu said that if your wives, your families guarantee that you are a good person, you are a good person. Your akhlaq and your manners within that. So what makes a blissful family? What makes a family which is a great family an ideal Muslim family? In order to realize this and understand this, let's look at the most dysfunctional <coughs> families in America. According to statistics, there are five root causes of the most dysfunctional families in America. Five things that causes the families to be most dysfunctional in America in general. I'm not talking about Muslims. I'm not talking about people with faith. I'm talking about families in general. What makes the most dysfunctional families in America so that we can learn and make the most ideal Muslim family in our life? Number one thing, this is nation, national, uh, you know, community-wise, and this is ranked from top five causes of family discord in America. Number one is work. What does that mean, work? is the first cause of a dysfunctional family. Does it mean that I can't work? No. Being busy prevents a person from having quality time with the family. Being busy with the work does not allow a person to spend quality time with the family. As I said previously, that we are building houses. We're not building homes, brothers and sisters. So number one reason in America for the most dysfunctional families is the reason of work. Busy. Being busy prevents a person from spending quality time. Brothers and sisters, I put this in bold letters and I underline it as well. Quality. A lot of time people will say, no, I spend time with my family. I come from work that time and I spend... Wallahi, ask yourself, was it quality time that you spend with your family? Or was it just the clock ticking and you were trying to spend that time and just get it over with and then move along to some other things? Quality time with one's family. If one is not spending quality time with one's family with an excuse of work, then that's the first reason of the most dysfunctional family in America. And, and brothers and sisters, for both, you don't have to apologize for what you need to do i.e. working long hours. You don't need to apologize for that. But you need to compensate. Maybe wake up a bit earlier and to have breakfast with your family or pray Fajr together or anything that will make you together as quality time. You don't have to apologize that I have to work long hours. No, 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 that's not an excuse. But compensate for the loss of your long hours with quality time with your family. Compensate for your five to five shifts with your family. And that is the first reason of the most dysfunctional families in America, brothers and sisters. That we cannot let our work be an excuse of not spending quality time. And I say this again, not time, quality time with our families. Number two is communication. It's communication. And what does that mean? That deals with the lack of communication. When there's a lack of communication, nothing will ever work. One of my, you know, my older brother once was giving a, a talk and I, I was really inspired by a story that he said. He said a husband and wife got into a fight. So they said we're not going to talk to each other. So they decided upon not talking to each other. So whatever they would talk to each other, they would write on a piece of paper and they would just throw it at each other and that's how they would communicate. I'm not going to talk to each other. And they would write papers and they would throw it at each other. So one day, the person had a very, very important meeting in the morning to go, and he knew that he was very late to sleep, and he couldn't get up with his alarm only, so he requested his wife that, can you please, you know, wake me up at a certain time in the morning, and then he writes a letter and he gives it to her as a paper, can you please wake me up at 5 o'clock. So now he gives her the paper, he goes to sleep hoping that he's going to get up. 7 o'clock, he gets up, he's so mad, he goes to his wife, he starts screaming and says, why didn't you wake me up at 5? I told you. I know that we had a fight, but I told you to wake me up. So she pointed towards the fridge, and there was a letter, and it says, wake up, it's 5 a.m. <laughs> 5 a.m., wake up, it's 5 a.m. Brothers and sisters, a lack of communication. Lack of communication is the second biggest reason of dysfunctional families in America. And another thing to realize within itself, that it also comes from being too busy. You don't have time to communicate. Brothers and sisters, check for your own self. 
and I started doing it myself. Come from long day at work, and I walk inside my house, and my phone is still with me. And wife is saying assalamu alaikum, I'm saying also assalamu alaikum. I go inside and sit in my sofa. So how many times does that happen? That I'm walking inside my house from the long day of work, rather than greeting them with hospitality and love and affection, I'm still on my phone walking inside my own homes. While giving my children the love and affection and that communication, I'm too busy myself. So that is the second most important reason. And if family members do have time, they have short circuits and they begin to fight. One person, and of course a lot of people say, that your silence can actually be a bad communication as well. Some people say, when we don't talk, we don't get into fights, so we don't talk. A lot of families, a lot of husbands and wives say, you know, we always get into fights when we talk. So now we started not speaking to each other anymore. So we, we speak as less as we can. Brothers and sisters, your silence is actually a form of a bad communication. No communication is bad communication. So that is not an excuse in our families that will make our families productive while not speaking. That is not the reason. So an ideal family is someone who speaks. I'm always inspired by the ayah of the Quran. Ya abit, he says, Qala ya abit, Oh my father, inni araf al manam. Oh my father, I've seen my dream. I, I always wonder, my kids are still young, five, three, and two. Um, may Allah protect all of our, our children and our progenies. I always imagine if my son will ever wake up one day and share his dream with me. Or, or share his feelings with me for the relationship that we keep with our kids. Or are we even so close to them that would even come to us and, and, and be inspired and speak to us for the reasons itself. So the second most reason for the most dysfunctional families in America, brothers and sisters, is a lack of communication. And some people think that when we don't talk, we don't fight. Well, you know, that, that's a wrong way of communicating. Number three. Number three is the, the, the demographics or the dynamics of our families. The society and the dynamics of our families are the third reason which causes the most dysfunctional families in America. And what do I mean by that? That means that the roles and responsibility of the wives and the husbands must be redefined due to many cultural changes. We must redefine the roles and responsibility of the spouses because of multiple changes, changes within the culture and society that we live in. If we do not define the roles and responsibilities, then brothers and sisters, where I started off from, we will find social eclipse in our homes. When the sun and the moon are changing paths, then the stars are going to lose their radiance. When the husbands and wife, the mothers and fathers, when they are not doing what they're supposed to do, and they are crossing paths by not defining their paths themselves, then the radiance will be lost from our own children. Brothers and sisters, I know so many young kids who have come to me, myself, directly and said, we are tired of living because of the feist that we see in our own homes. Young kids who have a life to inspire humanity are the ones who are, who are completely lost. So the way that we communicate, the way that we deal with them, brothers and sisters. A few years back, I think 2015, uh, Toastmaster is one of the company which teaches public speaking. So people who work for corporate world here may know Toastmaster because they give courses to all the corporate 500 companies, Fortune 500 companies as well. So Toastmaster itself holds a speech competition every year. A person comes and speaks for a few minutes and then have a competition of who wins. 2015, a man known as Muhammad al qahtani won the Toastmaster speech contest of the year across the globe, the entire world. His topic was, your words have power. Your words have power. And let me share with you a small script from what he said. He said, one day I walked inside my house. I walked inside my house and I saw my kid. He's four years old and he's drawing on the wall with the crayons. So being a father, I go to him and I push him to the side and say, what are you doing? Is this wall made for drawing on the crayons? And you have papers and you have coloring books and you have so many things. And he says, my son, he's four years old. He looked at me and he kept on doing what he's doing. The ego of a four-year-old. You can't mess with that. So he says, next day I walked inside my house. And next day he's looking at me and he's doing. He's like, what are you going to do about it, right? The ego of a four-year-old. Yesterday you pushed me around and now we're going to see what you're going to do. 
So he says the ego of a four-year-old pumped inside of him. The next day, he was looking at me and doing it. A day before, he was like kind of hiding. And the next day, because his ego got tempted, he was looking at me and he was doing it. So he said, I realized my mistake. He said, I went on my knees and I sat down. And I joined my eyes with his eyes. I wasn't like a big monster standing in front of him. I got on my knees. I combined my eyes with his eyes. And I held his shoulders. And I said, my son, you're a big kid now. And big kids are not supposed to do this. He says, from that day, my son never wrote on the wall again. He said, your words have power. Your words have power, brothers and sisters. Your words can take a life of an individual from the slums of the life to the height of this world. Or your words can take a life of an individual from the excellence of life to the slums of this world. It's your words that you choose for your children and for your spouses as well. For both husbands and wife, the way that we communicate with them, the way that we speak with them, our words will make a difference, brother and sisters. And if we are not choosing our words rightly, then our words have power which will affect our, our, our partners and our spouses and our children as well. So the, so the third aspect of the most dysfunctional families in America is the societal demographics or dynamics of our families themselves. Which means that we must redefine the roles and responsibilities of the spouses within our own homes so that we do not cross our paths and we do not destroy the life of ourselves and our children. And of course, that also impacts the finances, which is a different topic to itself. Fourth reason, and this is the national statistics that I'm sharing with you. The fourth reason of the most dysfunctional families in America, and brothers and sisters, we all will agree, is media. And what does that mean, media? It's the most dysfunctional family reason. Everything in media, especially when it's so visual, portrays a family image of life of a family which is so happy. And that image that resonates in the minds of so many men and women is that this is what an ideal family is. But in reality, that imagining a life of an individual in which reality, they have no happiness in their lives. So an imaginary life that people see through visual effects of media has destroyed the minds of so many people. When people look at the media and the social feeds of so many people, and so many people get in so many problems. I was speaking to one brother, and he said, my, my, my family was going so smoothly and so comfortably, but ever since my family started using Snapchat, and knowing all that what other people are doing, there are complaints every day in my houses. That their family is doing this, and their family is doing this, and we can't do anything in our life. And we have the worst family in the world. So the media plays an issue. And this is national statistics of the most dysfunctional families in America. And brothers and sisters, I don't say media is wrong. There's so much benefit for it. But when it comes to harm us, then we need to set the goals for ourselves. Or set restrictions for ourselves. That I'm not going to allow this to harm me. The Quran says when the harms of something are more than its benefit, then avoid it. When the harms of something are more than its, its benefits, then avoid as much as you can. Yes, there are benefits of it. And I do not disagree with it. I use Snapchat. I use all that stuff. But making sure that it does not harm our personal lives as families, as communities as well. So another thing is, of course, the media. Even, you know, so many things that are idealized by the minds of individuals. The fifth reason. According to statistics, the fifth reason, which becomes the reason of the most dysfunctional families in America, is infidelity. And what do I mean by infidelity, brothers and sisters? That when partners begin to cheat upon each other. And that is, there are many methods of this. According to statistics, the surveys, that divorce increased 12% in America last year. In 2017, the divorce rates in America increased 12% last year. 38% of those 12% cases were related to relationship on Facebook. And that is something that just started reasons of infidelity for partners, brothers and sisters. Again, don't get me wrong. I'm not here to bash and talk that these are the worst things that you have to leave. But I'm saying that these are the statistics that have worked in front of us which have caused the families to be destroyed. Brothers and sisters, firm commitment in our relationship to our partners. 
that those who commit their lives with us must know that we are with them till the last breath of their lives. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the last khutbah that he delivered which is known as the khutbah of Hajjatul Wida the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave the most profound khutbah and sermon of his life with 124,000 sahaba gathered in the largest gathering of the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's talk and he gave five paragraphs of that khutbah tul wida and the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in three of those paragraphs talked about the relationship of husbands and wife the rights of the woman Three of those paragraphs of how important it is to run a society. The humanity began with a couple, husband and wife, Adam and Eve. The humanity will come to an end in Jannah with a husband and wife, brothers and sisters. So that is how important it is for us to make that functional, blissful, and of course, a great family within our lives. Brothers and sisters, let's gather these thoughts together because I know I have only a few minutes to finish. Brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed us with the blessing of Iman and faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is the greatest blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ever given us. I begin off by summarizing what I said from the beginning so that we can take back some messages that I shared with you. I started off by saying that our kids do not listen to us, our kids observe us. The way that we live our lives is the way that our kids will also reflect upon things. We also must realize that as lunar and solar eclipse happens outside, there is a social eclipse that may happen in our homes. And that is because of the wives and the husbands, mothers and fathers, not fulfilling their responsibilities and the effects being upon our stores, they are our own children. I also shared with you the example of Sayyidina Ibrahim السلام, and Nuh السلام. Ibrahim السلام's son was ready to give his life. Nuh السلام's son is not even ready to save his life. The reason being, when the spouses both are not committed, you cannot have results. Brothers and sisters, if you want changes in our families, in our society, then we ourselves must change itself. I shared with you a story of a young boy coming to his father and buying an hour of his life. Commit times with your family itself. I share with you five things related to the most dysfunctional families in America. One of them is self being work. When we make excuses of not spending quality time with our families. Number two, when we do not communicate with our families in a proper manner. Number three, when we do not set roles and we do not set guidelines for husbands and wives, spouses within the homes, then we have these issues. Number five, when the uh, number four is the aspect of media, and last but not least, the aspect of infidelity. <coughs> when we are not committed to the true love and affection within our own families, we ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to protect us and preserve us. This is just the scratch of the, uh, the the tip of the iceberg, brothers and sisters. This is a huge topic, and this is a very long topic and a detailed topic that requires so much details, analysis, and workshops, and sitting with parents and discussing ideas and coming through strategies of how to make our home blissful but this is just something that I shared with you so that we have an idea of how to step forward towards making our home blissful and beautiful and house of mercy and rahmah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring barakah and afi in our lives. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and preserve us and allow us to live our life according to the Quran and the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May Allah bless our Shaykh, inshaAllah. Um, in closing remarks, um, I will now ask the President, inshaAllah, he has five minutes before that, uh, to make the closing remarks and the vote of thanks. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, beloved brothers and sisters, assalamu alaikum wa barakatuh. Profound gratitude and thanks and appreciation, first of all, to Mufti Farhan and all your brothers and sisters for taking the time off to be here. Alhamdulillah, I'm not going to comment on what has been said. It's all just explicitly done in English language to a very large extent. If the choice is ours, but whatever we make in life, we have to account for whatever we have done. So we are all intelligent people here, and I ask sincerely that uh, they take back those five points at least. I'm going to repeat them. You all know what we can start with. It's always a start. It's never too late. What we're looking for at Abdin here, and uh, with the permission, we will we'll be discussing after with the Mufti. Indeed, we're planning some uh, activities at Masjid al in preparation for the transition, which I've been alluding all the time. Over the year, we have had in the late 2013, and before that, monthly lectures of this nature, and we want to go beyond that now. Please put on your calendar the last Saturday of every month. Inshallah, we're going to be having such type of lectures. 
But uh, <coughs> beyond that, now we want to have like workshops and seminars. We're going to be inviting uh, these learned shayuks to come and uh, impart your knowledge. And we ask your cooperation. We are having extensive programs coming up shortly. Please bear with us. We know the infrastructure is not ready, but by at least we can start here to transition over there. So next lecture will be at the end of uh, March. We're going to keep you updated, and uh, we're asking uh, Mufti to put on his calendar, have some res uh, some reserve time for us, not uh, for 40 minutes, but we want to go beyond it. Inshallah, we'll have it properly organized. Really, brothers and sisters will be perhaps in one uh, shed or one area where we can have some question and answers on a panel, so you can learn more and go back. So the idea is to promote education. <laughs> education is power, and you know that the structure we talk about, the house and the home, that can be taken away. But the knowledge that you possess, that cannot be taken away. So Allah gives us that. So we have to build. It's a learning process. Every second in our life, it's a learning process. So again, I want to join with all of you brothers and sisters in first of all, thanking uh, the uh, Mufti. We pray Allah SWT will continue to inspire him at this young age and to be an inspiration to all of us to promote this deen of Islam. As you know, we are the best of people, but it's only through our actions and our interactions. So again, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward each and every one of you. Have a blessed evening and we're looking forward for your continued support, inshallah. Thank you again, uh, Hafiz, uh, Mufti, and uh, Imam for organizing this. Jazakallah. Jazakallah Inshallah, we'd like to thank Brother Maksud for sponsoring dinner, inshallah, today. Um, We'll make dua for his family members, Ahmed Rahman, Sarah Rahman, and Shahzad Rahman, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them. All inshallah and reward them immensely, inshallah. Allahumma ameen. Allahumma laka alhamd, hamdani wa fi ni'mahum wa yuka fi mazida. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik wa majjid wa karim wa anziz wa fadlim. Ala hadha al-nabiyu al-kareem wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim tasliman kathira. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad wa barik wa sallim. اللهم في المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك قريب مجيب دعوات برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم اجعل جمعنا جمعا مباركا وتفرقنا تفرقا مرحوما ومشكورا والله we lift our hands in humility and humbleness we praise thee O Allah we exalt your name we put our trust and our reliance in thee O Allah we ask of thee O Allah as we come together for your cause let us disperse with your mercy and your acceptance. We ask of thee, O oh Allah, to bless your servant, our brother Maqsud, and his family, Ya Allah. We ask of thee to bless them with health and strength and afi and well-being, and grant them a tawfiq in their words and their actions, Ya Allah. We ask of thee to bless your servant, Ahmad Rahman, Sarah Rahman, and Shahzad Rahman, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Allah, we ask of thee, O Allah, to show us righteousness is righteousness and give us the ability, the strength, the iman, and the faith to embrace righteousness and show us falsehood as falsehood and keep us away from it, Ya Allah. We ask of thee for your love and the love of those who love thee and the love of every act that will draw us closer to thee. O Allah, separate us from our sins like you have separated the east from the west and cleanse us from our sins like you have cleansed the white cloth and filth. Wash us with water, snow, and hail. <coughs> Bless us, O oh Allah, and forgive us. Bless our parents and have mercy on them, like they displayed mercy and compassion unto us when they were bringing us up, Ya Allah. Bless us and bless our families, bless our children, O oh Allah, bless our community, Ya Allah. We ask of Thee, O oh Allah, to accept our dua and to mujib al da'wa to da'ini la da'an. Subhanahu rabbi ka rabbi izzati amma yisifun. Wassalamu ala al mursaleen. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Allahu akbar. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Here is a special family invitation to all families, relatives, and friends from Masjid al Abidin this Saturday, February 24th, 6 p.m., with the theme being An Ideal Muslim Family, with guest speaker Mufti Muhammad Farhan, who holds a PhD in Islamic jurisprudence and law. Let us join hands together with our families for the family event this Saturday, February 24th, 6 p.m. at Masjid al Abidin on the corner of 127th Street and Liberty Avenue. A tasty and delicious family dinner will be served. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.